You got your mama's sunshine. You got your daddy's rain. You're like a piece of heaven in a hurricane. Hey everybody, welcome this week to the podcast Off the Mountain. I'm Josh, I'm here with Ron, Tom, and Vince, and uh, we are here to talk about being thankful, but more specifically, we're going to talk about having a, before you turn it off, I know you guys are in the car, you guys are going to Thanksgiving dinner or whatever you guys are doing today or this week, and you guys have all these plans, Uh, we're going to talk about what it means to have a thankful mindset which is different than just being thankful or saying thanks. You know, it's nice to teach your kids to say thank you and please and to be polite. And I know that some of you guys um, have the tradition where you'll go around at Thanksgiving dinner and everyone will say what they're thankful for. Those are good things. Those are great things. But it's not quite the same as having a daily thankful mindset. And I think that there's, this is just my opinion. This is a hypothesis of mine. I think that if you want to lower your stress, you want to lower your um, anxiety levels, stop worrying about what you don't have, right? And start worrying, or not worrying, start focusing on and being thankful for what you do. Count your blessings, and I want to talk about that in a few minutes. But, you know, in a perfect world, Josh, holidays should be a very cozy, warm, uh, relaxing time. I was in Whole Foods, which is now ran by Amazon, I think, in Las Vegas. And, uh, you know, I went in there, and they're already playing traditional Christmas music. I'll be home for Christmas. Everybody was dressed up because it was a very cold day. And there was such a warm, fuzzy feeling in there. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the way the holidays should be in a perfect world. But somehow, we've managed to mess this up pretty bad. And now so many people are fighting depression, anxiety, sadness. And so that, that's, that's the environment in which we want to minister right now. Mm. Um, I see people in the stores in another week or two, even starting this week. And they're so stressed out because they're having to buy a lot of presents. They don't have the money. Yeah. Um, you got blended families causing all kinds of challenges. Mm-hmm. You've got a lot of unforgiveness going around and people are having to meet uh, for, for dinners and they don't know how to you know, orchestrate all of this. I mean, on and, and you've got the legalistic religious people on top of all this. You shouldn't be celebrating Christmas, Thanksgiving. I think they're okay when with it. So. When was the last, let me ask you this, when was the last time you got upset that somebody didn't spend enough money on you for Christmas. Never. Never, right? Absolutely of course never. <laughs> of course not. If you're right. an adult, if you're a kid, you know, maybe it's different. But when you're an adult, I mean, look, we we stress about so many things that are pointless to stress over. But Josh, even go back to that. What w- Would there be a difference between two people in the room, one giving you a really, really nice present, and the other one looking at you and going, you know, I, I had a had to hard time this year. I don't have hardly any money, but I saw this, and I knew this was you, and it's not much. It cost me $3. I, I did little changes to it, and I just knew I had to get this for you. Mm. I mean, the difference, you know, it came from the heart. One comes from, not that the other one doesn't. The yeah. nice present probably comes from the heart, too, but just meaning, or somebody saying, I didn't have money for the holidays, but I went out and made this for you. I mean, what a difference. Well, my six-year-old who's now six, uh, just recently turned six. She's so mature for a six-year-old. And she told me the other night, uh, just last night, actually, she said, Daddy, I really love uh, I really love Thanksgiving and Christmas. And she's all, but I don't love Christmas because of the presents. Wow. She's all, I love it because everyone gets together. That's wow, cool. that's a six-year-old. She said that wow. as a six-year-old. And I'm like, man, this is, this is well, good. Do we, need some, do we need to go back and refocus on some rules for these holidays? I mean, I've watched it get out of control my lifetime, you know, where you might be spending uh, an amount equal to, back in the day, $150 on Christmas and then $500 and then $1,000. I mean, right now we have time to set some standards. For example, in our family, and I'm not saying that everybody else should follow this, but we don't buy presents for the adults. Mm -hmm. We we do a name draw, and we have like a $50 limit. But the children, of course, obviously we do. But there was a time when we needed we needed to go back and focus on the meaning of the holiday because it got it was became outrageous. Got out of hand, uh, and the pressure was so great. And you see that in the stores. You look at this, some of these people, 
and bless their hearts, you can tell they probably don't have much money. And they're in there stressing out because they have to try to outspend somebody else. Mm. Man, we just really messed this thing up. We've got to come back and get some rules, man, and mm. get some sanity back into well, this. Well, it's sad. I, I hate seeing, and, and I think, uh, Vince, I think you've done this before, and I, I almost did it with you. I, I remember uh, you guys used to have the tents out front and, and you guys would camp out, but usually it was for something like a video game that was going to oh, sell right, out in front or of something. Best Buy or something. You camped out on holiday? Oh, no. No, no, not on the holiday. Oh, okay. uh, no, it was um, it was for like Best video games. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But, but people do that for Black Friday, right? And there they are do. amazing deals. And it's I think I think some of those people just like, they love the chase. They if love you the can make fun out of it. And I think they do make a lot of fun and have a lot of fun. But um, man, I mean, is the TV that important? You know, I don't know. I, I, I think that it's important for us to... Uh, to, like I said, do fun things together. And if it is a fun thing you do, great. But you know what's nice? Now the internet is just easy. I mean, it's just yeah. easy to get stuff on Amazon or whatever. You got all the deals on Go back to what you're saying, now. though. These kids could grow up in Vince's family going, oh, man, we can't wait to go spend a night in the tent to right. get the sales. Oh, it that could become it, a traditional thing. Vince never took his family out there. Vince, no. Vince was out there with his buddy. I was up there with the hustle. Yeah, they were trying, to get, they're trying <laughs> so, to get that video game that came out. You know, yeah. Whatever well, I think your, your gratitude or your, your, you know, your mindset of being thankful has to do with your expectations because I think a lot of people – their expectations exceed what they even need in life, right? And mm -hmm. I think if your expectations, if they set in reality, then it's going to go a lot, right along with how grat you know, your how much of a heart of gratitude you have and how thankful you are. I think there should be a law uh, where people over uh, sixteen they don't get presents. Oh yeah. What do you think? I don't know. I kind of still like getting a present <laughs> once in a while. I, I appreciate. I don't it, think sixteen. Make it eighteen. Oh, 19, 18, 20. Okay. Yeah. I was but, just kidding. I'm joking, by the way, for those of but you guys. That, that but are, that has uh, to do with the expectations, right? Like you said earlier, you talked about. You know, we get upset if we don't get that present that we thought we should get, and it's like, well, what do we really deserve, right? What do we actually deserve in life? And I think what a we lot need, of that, though, right. is we don't need present. We need presents. Before we, we get too people. spiritual, before okay. we get too spiritual, right. I want to ask you a question. What was uh, the fav most favorite Christmas presents you ever have received. Uh, going back to when you were six, seven, just, oh, I just know. what it was it. So one Christmas, and like you said, my family did not, we did not grow up with a lot of money, but I remember one Christmas I opened up a Nintendo NES, mm. which is like in the end of like 1989, and a Sega Genesis on the same Christmas. Mm. Wow. And I was like... Hit the jackpot. I hit the jackpot. I was like, <laughs> what? So I was like that kid that you see on this yeah. screen, and I didn't know which one to play. Yeah. I was like, I went, was going back and forth yeah. all day. So but excited, so what, excited. But what about was, you? What about you, Tom? Well, it's funny because I got I can one up Vince on this one because I had an original uh, Atari. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> it was the Pong. Remember the, all the Pong? Oh boop, man, boop, I love boop, Pong. And 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 it was so crazy because we got it and we had to open it and play. We, we were so enthusiastic about it, but now you go to an Xbox or a PlayStation, <laughs> and you're going. That was like. Stickman drawings, you know, <laughs> right? But 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 it was so exciting to go boop boop. Remember that? Pat, oh, that I remember. Noise? Remember it and, well. And, and 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 you would you would move up your little um uh, right. paddle and uh, try to put a spin on the ball if you could. Yeah. Uh, but but I'm just saying, I remember that. That's awesome. And, and as you look back, I mean, as you look back with the, the, the that mindset, you know, it, it, it was the excitement of there, but it didn't last. Yeah. Well, what about yeah. yours, Josh, before we get into a spiritual overtone here? Um, I mean, obviously, the video game system when we were kids, that was everything because the yeah. Nintendo system was new. And we got it, you know, I got it a little later. But at the end of the day, it was so cool to open it up. And then the best memory I have is you and I played all night. All night long. All we night did. long. That's we wild. did. And, and that was the last time I think you ever played the a video game. The last time I've ever played a video game in my life. Ever, but that was in the 80s. And uh, yeah, he stayed up all night and played. But uh, I also remember a gift that, that sticks in my mind. And it was just, it was wrapped um, just like a gun. Uh, and it was a gun. It was a shotgun. <laughs> I, I got a shotgun. How four, old were you? A 410 shotgun. I don't know. Probably 12 years old. You got I a 410 shotgun know. on was, Christmas. I was young. It was like my first uh, real gun. And I was excited about that. Folks, That's welcome awesome. to Bakersfield. You're yeah. thinking about things to <laughs> blow up. I was ready right? to go hunting. Ready to <laughs> go. Well, my, mine was a 10 speed bike. Okay. All my friends had bikes. I didn't have one. And I mm. got a 10 speed That's bike. That's awesome. I was about 12 years old. And I mean, you, even sometimes now uh, on Christmas Day, if you're traveling, you'll see kids out on the road riding their new bikes. Yeah. And, uh, well, of it course, is magical for kids, man. I mean, magical it's time. time of the year. Really we don't is. want to deprive them of that. And, and there are a lot of kids, too. By the way, uh, the church every year does the angel tree. Uh, mm -hmm. And if you guys are in yes. local in, in Bakersfield and go to VBF, we do our angel tree thing every year where you can go and pick an angel off the tree. Well, again, again before we get gift. too spiritual, I'm glad you remind them of that. Is uh, this is one of the the, the 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 three major holidays right here in a row, 
And again, I love Thanksgiving, probably the best of the three. Because Thanksgiving, again, what? Fun, food, and what? Family. Oh, no, I was say you got family. the three. I was going to say family, but that's <laughs> right. and, uh, I said family. Pumpkin pie. Oh, something more gas related. I don't know. Pumpkin pie, turkey, <laughs> all that. But then we, after Thanksgiving, we follow up with Christmas. After Christmas, New Year's Day. Yep. And so going back to Thanksgiving, because this is the one right upon us right now. The, the word comes by combining two nouns, thanks, and the present participle of the verb give. Now, unfortunately, we very often put too much emphasis on the giving and not the thanks. But you have to put the two together. Mm-hmm. So Thanksgiving, we go back to, you know, Plymouth. We go back to the Mayflower and how that these, these pilgrims and the Native Americans got together on the first Thanksgiving. And they went out and killed some, some birds and they, they killed some deer and they brought it together. And they were thankful because they just had a really uh, horrible winter. And there was a lot of thankfulness in that first holiday. But somehow we start losing a little bit of that. Our, we're, we're just losing focus as a culture at large. Mm. And I think we got to bring it back. So again, what, what, what are, if, if you were the dictator and, and you were able to change some rules or, or put out there some rules for the holidays, is there any, are, there, are there any rules that you would implement on Thanksgiving, Christmas, or, or New Year's? Well, one of the rules that I, we have with my, my wife's side of the family when we do Thanksgiving, and I think a lot of people have adopted this, is we have to go around the table and actually say something we're thankful for before we actually eat. Which That's is, cool. It's, it's, sometimes it's like, oh, man, I don't want to do this. You know, you're sitting there, I'm like, I'm just hungry. But it's good. It's good for everybody to go around and actually share like something you've, you're actually thankful for for the year. I like that. So, I like that. We do that, too, sometimes. We haven't been real consistent with it. Well, you know, when the girls were little, I mean, and I, and I think uh, the, the um, state of mind for having gratitude is something you want to bring in every day. I mean, when the girls were young, we'd always come around the dinner table because we liked to eat dinner around the table when they were young, and they had to talk about something they were grateful for that day mm. and something that really wasn't really spectacular in their day. Mm. And we had to go, we, you had to measure both. Mm. But, I, but I think having the right mindset is what really gets you to that place because really gratitude is in the mindset, isn't it? I mean, it's, Yeah, oh, I mean, definitely. I mean, you know, as we're walking through every day, we're always, some people call it a mood. You know, um, I think what I would do is I would enforce a Sabbath uh, during this time because I love the Jewish tradition of Sabbath where they shut everything down yes, yes. for a full 24 hours and they hang out with their family. And I think that if we did that, even housework, right. chores, um, yep. responsibilities, you know, balancing the checkbook, all those things, they can wait for a day. I think that was a way that God um, set up for for his kill his kids to basically uh de-stress yeah. to 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 let you know let the let the and uh, josh back in back in my day uh on sundays all stores were closed everything mm-hmm. closed down there was a reverence uh right now are there stores actually staying open on christmas I, oh, yeah absolutely. yeah it, there, there are yeah, there's absolutely. been a trend um for thanksgiving it's terrible there's been a trend where a lot of stores are closing on thanksgiving but they should all close but yeah well they close now on thanksgiving to get ready for they open up at four o'clock right. on thanksgiving for so, black friday right right but i mean you still have starbucks open like you said and i like what you said josh that's so huge because sometimes just having that day to reflect and be with family versus people are going to work i mean everybody can live without starbucks and i'm not coming to sure starbucks can. but you know, for those people that are working, it's like if you can have that day of rest and just yeah. with your family, that's huge. Yeah, that's a good one. I like that. Well, I, I didn't know because I don't keep up with this a lot because I don't shop a lot. But I know, again, back in my day, we weren't even allowed to mow the lawn on Sunday, which was great for me. I loved it. Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, everything was closed down. No, no shops were open. No stores were open. And, again, I wished our country could bring back some of that reverence and and, and, you know, Starbucks, like you say, we can live without that. Um, so maybe we need to start, I don't know, I guess you can't do it, put some pressure on somebody's place let and me, say, come on, close down for Thanksgiving and Christmas, Let me say please. this. Let me say this. Think of your last holiday season. What is one memory that you have? And I'm talking to the people that are listening. What is a memory that you have that is a good memory of oh, the last season? Josh, I don't know if I, I think you remember this. I don't remember how old you were. We were we lived up in Springville uh, on the farm. We call it the farm, 
And so of all days, your mother got sick on Thanksgiving. <laughs> She's in bed with a fever. So Tara and I, and I don't know where you were at. Do you remember this? I do. Uh, we had uh, one of our foster sons with us or two. I was staying out of the way. We, we decided to cook. Our, our uh, uh, what was it? Uh, we're doing dumplings or something. We made a total mess <laughs> out of everything. Our, uh, the fix, turkey pretty much caught fire. We caught fire on the turkey. Wow. And then, it burned. And then there was smoke in the house. And, and what did I do? You opened up all the doors. And what did I do beyond and that? And all the flies came in. All the, well, no, for, first I opened up the doors. Why did I open the doors? Mm -hmm. I went and got the, the weed blower out of the garage mm -hmm. to blow the smoke out. So I'm blowing it out of the kitchen. Uh, we were all choking. And then when uh, I blew the smoke out in that event, the flies came in. So then I changed it to sucking up stuff, and I was trying to suck the flies out. Anyway, I think long they story made a short, movie about this. Our, they did, right? our <laughs> dressing, our dressing was like soup. Mm -hmm. But you know what? After all was said and done, Tara and I were talking the other day. That was one of our favorite holiday memories. <laughs> It was so much fun. Was that the same day you got stung by a wasp, or was that different? Uh, it might have been. I don't know. We were sure. out swatting wasps with yeah. tennis rackets. Yeah, that was a bad idea. Uh, I, anyway, so, th that was my favorite yeah, so holiday. I, what, what I'm saying is is one of the uh, things about creating memories with your family is there's a direct connection with that and being mindful. I mean, and what yes. I mean is is focusing on being here right now. Right. Mm. Um, versus, you know, you're hanging out with your family, but you're thinking about 10 things you got to do, or you're thinking about, you know, work, or you're thinking about, you know, you know, this relative that didn't say hi to you when they came in the door or whatever. If you can get out of that headspace and get into a here, now mind, mindset, um, that will help you realize what you do have. And I think that'll help you realize uh, how to have um, a thankful mindset. Was it well. two podcasts ago when we talked about planning ahead? Right. In other words, looking at Thanksgiving a couple of days ahead and going, here are some obstacles could get in, could, that could get in the way of making this a perfect day. And I'm going to get prayed up. I'm going to get ready. And uh, like Vince said, maybe even whoever's leading the household or is the not leading the household, but the person that's most influential or the person making the dinner, however you want to phrase it, that person might say, hey, let, let's go back on that traditional thing of sharing something around the table that we're thankful for. So what was, I didn't hear you guys say what your favorite holiday was or, or what your favorite memory of the holiday. Well, um, uh, yeah, I mean, last year, my favorite memory was actually New Year's Day when you guys all came up, uh, Vincent and, and, uh, oh. and all the kids came up and played in the snow that at was your fun. house, actually. And where yeah. were we? We were gone. I don't know where you guys were. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know where you guys were. Thank you. Uh, you just took over. We did. Yeah. Uh, Thank we, you. We, we said your house. I think you guys were in Las Vegas. We might have been in Las Vegas. But uh, all the kids came up and played in the snow. That's neat. And it was it was a lot of fun. That's that neat. was. And I remember um, just just thinking about you know just how good it is to be to be aware of what you have for the moment because these kids they grow so fast, man. My my kids are growing fast. Vince's kids have grown fast. I mean, one he's got one in high school. Um, you guys were talking about the difference, you, you know, dad, you have a granddaughter who just got engaged to be married. Tom, you got a couple of, uh, kids, uh, a couple of girls that, you know, one's married and it's, it's, it's wild how fast things happen. So Tom fast. and I, we always have a connection on the daughter thing. Because We're daughter I have, dads. Yeah. I have two daughter two dads. That's and, a good term. And he has two uh, little girls. And well, you know, like Josh last year, I, I remember this and I think, you know, sometimes you have to put things in perspective and, my daughter lives in Nashville, and my daughter lives in Irvine, so we don't see them a lot, but we FaceTime all the time. Mm -hmm. But it was so exciting. I remember we were, we, we were actually looking at our phones and tracking them home, and you know we, we went out in the driveway to meet them, and they both kind of pulled in at the same mm -hmm. time. And so there was just, just like, wow, we're together. Right. And it was an appreciation for that. And we hadn't even done anything that cooked a meal yet. And so it was just, you know, having that fact that, hey, yeah. we're, we are together again. I mean, it was, a, it's, it's a, my daughters are coming in for this holiday coming up. And, uh, and of course, Tess is married now, so she's bringing Danny. And this is something I think, you, like Pastor said, you have to prepare. Because in our family now, he is Hispanic, and he has a large gathering on Thanksgiving. So they called us and said, hey, we're going to have to split up our Thanksgiving. And we're like, okay, and we're going to get to see you, though, right? And we're like, yeah. So I, we said, hey, you, go to, you guys go to Danny's on Thanksgiving Day, 
and we'll all be together. And then on Friday, we'll all celebrate together. Mm -hmm. So it was an expectation that we had mm, to say, yeah. okay, we're going to set off ours. Yeah. We're still going to yeah. celebrate, but we're going to have family time. And they were giving, but we had to give too. Yeah. So it was that gratitude that, hey, we're going to get to see them, maybe not on the day. It's okay to, uh, to have uh, kind of, you know, uh, your own schedule that yes. you're comfortable with and uh, that everyone's comfortable with. I want to remind people to take a lot of pictures yes. oh, because Absolutely. memories are worth everything. Yes. Now, back in the day, we'd have to say, do you have film for the camera, film for the camera? Yeah. We all have our cell phones now. But not, not Instagram photos. Photos just to take, you know, yeah. the, right. the ones that are real, you know, yeah. the, the, those uh, memory photos. You know, before we change directions, and I, I feel maybe we should, I was reading the other day about some research that had been done on gratitude. Dr. Robert Emmons of the University of California and Dr. Michael McCullough from the University of Miami. They, 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 they broke the participants of this research into three groups. And they told the first group, or they told all of them, they said, what we're going to have you to do, we're going to have you to write a sentence uh, each week on a different topic. And so the first group, they said, what we want you to do, every week you write a sentence on things you're grateful for. The second group, they said every week, write a sentence on the things that irritate you in that day. The third group, they said every day we want you to write a sentence on the events that has affected you in a given day, whether good or bad. And after 10 weeks, they looked at the participants. They said the people that wrote down something they were grateful for every day, they had less visits to the doctors. They were more optimistic. Wow. They were more happy just in 10 weeks. Yeah. So we're kind of switching now to not just the holiday season, but trying to live with a spirit of gratitude. Right. Yeah. And it's biblical. Yeah. So let's kind of make that switch right there. And uh, Well, but, okay, uh, I got it. I have a good uh, scripture that I, okay. that I didn't see it, uh, correlating with thankfulness uh, until I looked at it again. Ecclesiastes 1 uh, and 2, um, the writer basically goes into kind of a tirade of, of how he has done so many things and he has so many things and he's observed so many things in life, but yet he is miserable. Right. Um, and, and I think about that and I think about the, this, this, this idea or this mindset that he had of wanting more, more doesn't really exist. Right. It's like, right. if you have, if you actually get more then get, then more still is out of reach. Right. It's something that you never actually get. It's not a real thing. It's a, it's, it's the, the, the finish line continues to move and move right. and move. There's, there's never right. enough. Yeah. And so his mindset is on that. And the result of that is it says in the scripture that he hated his life. Yeah. He hated his life. Yeah. And this is a rich person. This is somebody who had, we believe it's Solomon, but it's somebody who had everything that you could imagine and all the wisdom and all the accolades and the respect and the love that you can, that you can get. And he was miserable. They say, well, they, they say that once you uh, make a certain amount of money, that beyond that, it doesn't affect your it doesn't happiness, affect your happiness anymore. Right. In fact, it kind of goes yes. opposite direction. The opposite direction. Yeah. But I was thinking about this thought, and when I, I, I don't know why I, how I even correlated this Ecclesiastes, uh, Ecclesiastes chapter with this idea, but the idea was, how do we? get into the mindset of understanding where all the good things in life actually do mm. come from. Because you can't be thankful unless you know who gives you the goods. Yes. Unless you know who to thank. Like my kids are writing letters to Santa, right? They're thanking Santa for last year's gifts. Well, you know what, when Josh? We, in James 1, 17 is what you're talking about. Every good and perfect gift comes down from above, right. the Father of lights. And that's just it. And that's, that's what I'm saying. Like, uh, How often do we think that? I mean, honestly, is that verse saying that you can't have a perfect gift, perfect, without it coming down from the Father? For example, your mother and I, we had not taken this drive for many years. And the other day, it was on a Sunday, I think, we decided to drive out through Hart Park. And it was jammed with people. But as we drove through the park, I told your mother, I said, you know what? I said, look at the faces of these people. They are flat happy. They're flat having a good time. Now, I, I would think that it's quite possible that they were having as much fun or more fun than people with big multi-million dollar homes in their backyard. Mm. 
And so it proves the point uh, that you were saying yeah. that uh, happiness comes with contentment. But let's yeah. go back to that verse. I want to ask you that question. If every perfect gift comes down from the Father of lights, from our Heavenly Father, I mean, could we take that verse so far down the road as to say that when God is instrumental in putting your marriage together and gives you that spouse, can, can that be more perfect than when you go out and choose them yourself? I mean, there, there's a lot of depths to some of these verses. Right. Well, well I can answer. Uh, I, I'm, I'm the only one sitting at the table that can answer that because I've been, uh, uh, I've been in a 10-year, 11-year marriage that there was no love, and that was chosen by myself. And I've been in a marriage that I know God brought Tiffany into my life, and we're in love to this day. Mm-hmm. So, right. so, so, you, so I, I mean, I can sit here and say I'm a, I'm a perfect analogy of that. So that's another thought that I had, right? Is, is everything comes from God, but yet sometimes God moves through somebody else. So there's sometimes there's two people to thank. There's you thank God for the the big gifts, right? But then you thank your wife for for being a vessel of God and loving you through Him, right? It's like they, they're they're co-conspirators, you know. And we can't forget to be thankful to the people in our lives, too. Well, well, you know, and I was going on because, I mean, I screwed up my first marriage. Mm-hmm. It's my fault. And I've said that many a times. I mean, it's my infidelity that did that. But I'm just saying, I, 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 the, the love wasn't there, and I think love's not an emotion. It's a commitment of the will. But you don't learn that until God inhabits right. your heart. So I, I think there, you, as you frame that, I think you have to look at it when the components. Once God's in charge... Your decisions are a little better than they were before. Exactly. You know, and and I think I think that's important for the audience to know because you can think you were happy, right? Right. We can all think, hey, I mean, you know, when people look at my old life, they're thinking, oh, you had money, you had cars, you had girls, you had this, you had that. You're not happy. So what is gratitude then? Right. I'm gratitude for the stuff, but you're not grateful for the way I'm living or my or, or what I'm doing because I mean, I, I had to wake up with that guy every morning, and I think that's something that is you, you think about it. And, you, and I like the mindset of gratitude because you do have to wake up. And I think if everybody <coughs> focuses on an everyday practice right. of the Bible says rejoice always, again, I say rejoice, right? It's like, it's like, it doesn't say if it's a good day or a bad day or a rainy day or a sunny day. It says rejoice because it's a day God made. I think there's two, di- two different types of people that when they receive gifts, there's people that think that they're deserving of the gift. And then there's the undeserved people that know that they did not deserve it. Like that second marriage, you probably felt like you were so undeserving of oh, that. I, I, like I, you did not. I got a repeat. Right. I, I got blessed in the repeat. But it's, I think, because of my decision to trust God. It's like pastor. But if you if you come into this life and you think, well, I deserve all this stuff. And then you start to, you start, start storing it up. You think, you, you know, you, you're like, this is all mine. It belongs to me. And you always talk about. God gives us these things, but they're really God's. He's letting us borrow know, them. I've got a perfect story to illustrate yeah. what you're saying. Jesus is on his way to Jerusalem, and these 10 lepers come out, and they want to be healed. And so they, they you know, ask him for mercy and grace. And so anyway, he extends a healing to them, and he says, go show yourself to the priest, which, which I mean, I could stop and and, 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 and just get, you know, taken away with some of these side points, but let me make the point I want to make. For example, the side point is, you know, they actually had the faith to take off to go show themselves the priests at a point when they weren't healed. Hmm. Now, now, now let's get this scenario in, in uh, proper uh, uh, picture. Let's get a proper picture of it. Leprosy. You sometimes would lose fingers, lose hands, lose limbs. An arm could just fall off. Someone said they were in a leper colony one day, and they said the stench was so bad they had to come out. They couldn't even stay in there. So these lepers come, and they say, man, have mercy on us. And he says, okay, go show yourself the priest. I'm going to heal you. And they take off. And one of them, who happened to be a Samaritan, and I think this is important to the story, he comes back, the only one that came back, and he falls at the feet of Jesus and says, thank you, thank you, man. I appreciate what you did for me. And Jesus says, wasn't there nine more? Where are they at? And he says something very interesting to this uh, Samaritan guy. He said, your faith has has made you whole. Your your faith has uh, saved you, made you whole, made you well. And I've often thought, what was he saying there? This Samaritan, 
first of all, he was a Samaritan. He didn't think he deserved this blessing that this Jewish rabbi gave him, which, uh, you know, just stands to reason. Right. But he comes back, and what he was saying to Jesus was, thank you for the grace, the unmerited favor. Mm. I know I don't deserve this. Right. And I'm coming back, and Jesus says, by that very fact that you realize that you didn't deserve what you got, he said, you're going to be well the rest of your life. The other nine, they might have received a healing. What's the opposite of that attitude? I would say it's entitlement. Entitlement is a great opposite. And how many you know young people these days are but, entitled? But Josh, and, go, go back to that story. Go back to that story. He says this grace that you're, you're, you're revealing that you have knowledge of, he said this is going to go beyond your physical healing. That grace is going to make you whole, sozo, well. Mm. Now, Not think just about it. Better, but whole. If you don't really believe in grace, undeserved favor. Now, the Samaritan knew double he didn't deserve it. Mm. Wow. He was a Samaritan. He was a half breed. He didn't deserve it because he was a Samaritan. He didn't deserve being healed. I mean, this rabbi owed nothing to me. Now, without grace, without really latching on to grace, and without really believing in grace, you won't have peace. Well, yeah. You won't be able to go to prayer and ask boldly for requests because you'll always feel guilty. So I think he made a statement here. Because you firmly believe in undeserved favor, not only will you experience this physical healing that you just received, but now you're going to be made whole in every area of life. What you're saying is mm-hmm. huge too because we. I, that's, that's, that's like, I'm, I'm like processing this right now as, as you're saying this, but a lot of people think that their next raise or the next car or that next job is what's going to make them whole. They think that's going to think the thing that's going to give them that peace or whatever. And it's not, it's what you're saying. It's, 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 it's actually that, having that going back to the feet of Jesus. And say, it's not, I'm so I'm so undeserving of this. Right. And I'm thankful for that because if you get something, if you think that next job is going to give you this wholeness. It's not. No. If you think that next you know, whatever, you, it's not. I think the I think the thing is, is people uh, get in the mindset, it's not, not necessarily greed, like I have to have that to be better than that person or whatever. Sure. I think it's like, if I only had that, then life would be easier. If I only had that, then 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 things would flow the way they need to flow, you know? Well, it's I, all an illusion. It's all an illusion. Well, it I is. remember when I was younger, I always thought to myself, and you guys can, you can pop in and let me know if you feel like this. I always said to myself, if I can make 500 more dollars, I'm going to be doing good. Like all my bills will be paid. I won't have to worry about anything. Then at some point I make the 500 extra dollars. I'm like, if I can only make 500 extra more dollars and it just keeps going on, right? Like you don't, you're That's always- saying more is, is Right, but I'm just saying you always think like if I can get to the next place, but somehow we've lost the place where it's like, I'm good where I'm at. And then instead of being, like you said, being present with your family and you know, we overextend ourselves one of my, and we always try to get One more. of my favorite Christmas movies is Christmas with the Cranks. Okay. Have you guys seen that one? Yeah. That's a good one. They, uh, it's, it's with, uh, Tim Allen and, uh, who's the, who's the lady? It's, uh, Sigourney, uh, Sigourney Weaver. No, no, it's, um, I can't remember. Oh, it's going to cut Halloween girl, alien. the Halloween girl. Oh my gosh. She's, is it Sigour- Sigourney yeah, like, uh, uh, That is not. No. Oh, maybe that is. Yeah. Maybe you're right. <laughs> no, it's no, not Sigour- I don't know. no, no, no. It's, it's, um, irrelevant. It's, Go on yes, to the story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. We're off track guys. We're off track. <laughs> everybody's, uh, everybody's Somebody's yelling, yelling at no their one radios cares. right now. They're going anyway, crazy. The, the movie uh, is about, and I don't want to spoil it for anybody, but it's about these, this couple and they're older and their daughter's away and they, they decide to, they're going to skip Christmas and they're not going to buy any gifts. They're not going to put any, uh, decorations up. They're not going to do any of the Christmas things because they're going to go on a cruise. And so they, you know, they're, they're just kind of like, avoiding everyone that has to do with Christmas cheer or trying to get them to do something or put up their, you know, uh, their traditional, uh, Christmas, you know, uh, decorations and all stuff. And what's funny is in the movie, the daughter ends up, uh, and this is a spoiler alert. So in case you haven't seen it, it's an old movie, but the daughter ends up, uh, coming home unexpectedly and bringing a new boyfriend. Right. And, and they have to cancel their cruise plans and they have to scrounge up whatever they can to make Christmas happen. And in that movie, it's so cool because the community all comes together to help them uh, in their situation to bring, you know, to make Christmas happen. And the reason I like that movie is because they didn't have to stress all month about making plans and doing all these things. Right. It all worked out. I mean, how many times have, have you had a family gathering 
and it didn't work out because you didn't prepare enough or you didn't or you didn't have enough you know i mean usually that's not the case usually it doesn't work out because people fight because they're stressed because uh, of the events that have led up to that day and so um you know maybe we declare a um a moment in time between thanksgiving and christmas and maybe thanksgiving and new years and say hey during this holiday season we're going to choose as a family to not be stressed, to not be led by stress, to not be led by anxiety, to not be led by keeping up with other people. And we still have time to, to do that, Josh. Each other. We, do. we still That's have time saying. to do that. Again, I think one of the smarter things that we did as a family, and we said, hey, we're not going to live with this pressure of buying everybody presents. All the adults get together. Let's draw a name. There's a $50 or $100 limit. That's all you can spend. It's a stocking. Just get some funny gift gag, uh, gag gifts, whatever, whatever. But going back to this, uh, this leper, he came back to show gratitude. Mm. There was something there. I read a story the other day, and I was trying to bring it to my memory. But it was something about an older lady that was on a street corner begging, and people were giving her money. And some lady who had given her money several occasions saw her one day months later on the street corner again. And she went to give her a donation. She says, no, 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 no. I don't want a donation. She says, I got a job, but I have something for you. And she had a wrapped up donut. She handed her and said, thank you for your kindness. And that is really cool. That story just kind of stood out in my mind of coming back and saying, you know what? I don't want anything now, but I do want a, a donut's not much, but I want to acknowledge yeah. that I appreciate what you've been doing for me. Definitely. Well, I, I like that idea of just having a... a a grateful a my, heart. A grateful. I, I think. I think getting the stress out of the way makes it a lot easier to be thankful. I think that's my my big point, and uh, it's something I'm working on. Well, right. let's let's get specific here. What are some things specifically that we should be thankful for? I just uh, got back uh, a couple weeks ago from Vegas, our 50 year anniversary, and those people were so excited. We had a packed house. We had we had to have a thousand people. And, uh, you know, I started thinking about that. God, the perfect gifts come from above. He gave us that church in Vegas. One day he looked down and he said, you know what? I need a church in Vegas. And I need one that I've birthed with these personality traits because I have a lot of people there that they can't find a church like the one I'm going to establish in Vegas. He gave that church to them as a gift to keep them spiritually strong so someday they can get spiritual rewards. And so I want to start out. I, I, if we can stay on this for a second. Yeah. Uh, I want to give thanks today for VBF Church in Bakersfield, mm. the one in Vegas, the one in Thousand Oaks that Pastor Jim's doing. God gave those churches to us because he cared that much about us. So I will start there. Now, you guys tell me, Let's list eight or nine things, maybe things that we could specifically be thankful for, and maybe not the obvious things that everybody thinks we're gonna I'm mention. Gonna, I'm gonna add the online audience to to your thankfulness because okay. I consider that a church. We have a huge for you guys that are listening to the Off the Mountain podcast. We actually have a huge yes. amount of people that listen online, and we're so thankful that they continue to do that. I'm super thankful. I know this sounds cliche. My wife, I know, like you said, Tom, she's a gift from God. In my ups and downs in ministry, in in wanting to do things sometimes my own way. My wife has just been a godsend to be able to keep me not only focused on God, but focused on what's important. And I'm so thankful for that. Um, and I think we should be thankful. I think sometimes we overlook that, you know, we can say, well, maybe your, your spouse is the nagging spouse or whatever, but God has probably put that person in your life. And, and if you can, instead of having an attitude of being not happy or discontent or whatever, changing your mindset to having a grat you know a mindset of gratitude or being thankful i think it'll also change your relationship with your wife or your spouse or that person you're with i think please don't changed. answer this but when was the last time we told our spouse thank you for marrying me mm. oh you are a gift to me i mean again we don't have to answer it but if we'd get in the habit of that of being thankful or even look at our kids saying thank you i heard uh, your mother tell one of the grandkids the other day Thank you for being born. That's and she told, I forgot which grandkid it was, but thank you for being born. And so I looked at her and said, you're welcome. This life of <laughs> gratitude. Uh, let's, let's something else. Well, what, and I know 
the obvious, and, 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 and I, you have a very sweet wife. You were Thank blessed you. for sure. In fact, all four of us were really, really yes. blessed in that, that area. But, and I know we're thankful for being our salvation and all of that. But let me throw another one at you while you're thinking. Well, I can answer but, it if okay. you don't want to leave that too okay. quickly. I, you know, I, I'm thankful for people that are put in my life to help me even when mm, they're, 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 they're may, there may be not criticism, but it's some encouraging advice. I had Tessa last week call me because there was another project I was working on, and she said, Dad, uh, I think this was wrong. And I, I sat there and I go, okay. She goes, well, I don't want you to make you feel bad. I go, honey, you didn't make me feel bad. You pointed it out because you're an expert in this area. And I'm glad you pointed that out to me because that's not a strong point for me. So it's almost like, the, you know, the Bible says that a rebuke is good yes, when it's yes. come from a, a loved one that cares about iron you. Iron sharpens and, iron. And so, and so you have to be thankful for those. And, and if they're close enough to you and they're telling you because they love yes. you, you can't receive it as a negative. It's a positive. And my daughter kept saying, Dad, I'm sorry to hurt your feelings. I go, no, honey, you didn't. That needed to be said. Yes. I need to receive it. And we'll move on. And it actually trickled down a little farther to, uh, to some other people. And they're like, no, we needed to hear that too. So I'm just saying, if you're out there, I mean, I don't think people should criticize people for a reason of criticism. But if you're, if you're saying the word at the appropriate time, at the appropriate season, it's a gift. We got to be, gra- be grateful for that because it's going to help us. Some of us don't look at a trial that moves us to the right path as being something that we're grateful for. Maybe not in the moment, but when you get on the right path, you what do they say, Pastor? Hindsight's 2020? 2020. Right when you're getting it, though, it doesn't seem like a great but, thing. But, Tom, when someone loves you, yes. can't they say pretty much anything yes. to you if you know it's coming out of a heart of love? Yes. I think they can. And you can receive it that way, too, you, right? You can receive it. I'm thankful for the person that led me to the Lord. Mm. And I just did his funeral. Mm. And I'm so thankful that that man saw a need to pray for my salvation. Anything else you can think of that maybe isn't as, you know, as obvious as we we're, we're thinking right now? Um, I mean, it's hard not to be obvious and say, you know, my wife right. and my family, uh, my oikos is what I would call it. Oikos, not the yogurt, but it, it's actually a Greek word that means family. And um, if I were to draw a circle and the circle's as wide as my arms can reach, you know, there's a, there's a certain amount of people in that oikos in that family circle that if that whenever I reach out, they're there. And, um, and I'm thankful for those people. Uh, you guys know who you are. Um, but I'm also thankful for the things that God holds back hmm. from happening to me. Oh, that's a good one. Um, they, I, I've always thought of the, uh, Israelites when they are being led through, uh, when they're, when they're being led out of Egypt, they come immediately to a dead end to the dead sea or, or to the red sea. And, um, what does God do? He has to perform a miracle. He opens up the sea and he allows them to go through. And I always have thought about my life and I've thought about what, what is he holding back? What, yeah. what are the mm-hmm. waters of destruction wow. that he's holding back That's for cool. me right now? And um, even though I've had a struggle with faith the last few months, the last year, um, I, every time I sit down and pray and read my Bible and, and get you know, connected with God, I think about the fact that he has held back the waters from destroying mm. me. Josh, Which, and, and they're waters that should right, have destroyed right. me. Constant, you know? It's a constant prayer of mine over the years. I might pray it once every week or so, and I'll say, God, thank you for the things that you've done for me that I don't know about, because I bet there's a lot of them, wow. and that would include protection. Yeah. yeah. Um, so anyway, you know, I want to challenge our audience. Uh, what, it's uh, two days before Thanksgiving. It's coming up. Uh, for the next three or four days, it's a challenge. Every day for the next three or four days, write out a yes. text to someone in your life and thank them for being your friend. Thank them for being a, a, a spouse, for being a child, whatever. I mean, let's just try that. Because like you said, we don't want this uh, broadcast to motivate you to be thankful at Thanksgiving only. Mm-hmm. Right. It needs to become uh, an, a, an attitude, a, a daily routine. Ritual almost. Yeah, First Corinthians, uh, First Thessalonians 5 and 18. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of Christ Jesus in you. Everything give thanks. So it needs to be an attitude. It's a good time to practice right now. You know, I, so, I got a, a thing that my wife and I did for years, and the other day it blessed us, and we haven't... So we did it for years as the kids were growing up, but we haven't carried it out. 
And the other day I was looking, and on our, and on our mantle we have a um, decorative glass vase, and there was rocks in it, and we'd always write when God did something on those rocks. So I said the other day, I told Tiff, I go, we need something right now. Let me just reach in and grab one. And I reached in, and I was very thankful for those monuments that you can that's cool. build. That's cool. Where I pulled it out and I read it, and my wife goes, "Why don't we keep doing that?" That's yes, cool. that's a good idea. Yes, yeah, we, but we did. But we, but in, in it was we would always do it, but we stopped. Mm-hmm. But I think that it was that was something we said we need to start doing it again because it let us remember something that was effective in our life that was pretty cool, and and so it was a kind of a decorative way of writing it down. But we cool. it was useful in you know, our house, and I love that because there's, there's action involved in the yes. thankfulness. Yes. And, and uh, Mike Maggard spoke at the men's retreat, and most of you guys weren't there. Uh, so you'll appreciate this. He said that one thing he did uh, for years, uh, I think I think it was his boys, uh, it was every year. He wrote, uh, wrote to for them. For their birthdays, he would write them a letter mm-hmm. and, um, and and give it to them. And um, I, I want to start doing that actually on Christmas for my family. And so I think it, th- that that's like thankfulness in action. That's like that's a way of saying to God, thank you for my family. Thank you for these yes, people. That is so cool. And, and thank you guys, you know, for being in my family and being, you know, part of that. And well, just, why does Hallmark cool make thing. so much money? Mm. People don't want to be creative themselves. I mean, I was just thinking of something as you two guys were talking. I'm trying to figure it out. I'm still trying to think. I can't think of anything. What's that? <laughs> why, why, why does Hallmark make so well, much money? Well, because right. people <laughs> could write their own cards. They could write their own cards. Oh, I, thought, I was thinking of the Hallmark Channel. People oh, want, oh. no, Hallmark yeah. cards. Got it, cards. Got it, got it. Uh, people want to pay channel. for someone else to do the thinking for them. Got it. As you guys were talking, I was just thinking, would it be cool if we could start writing out some hand cards, uh, handwritten cards? Yeah. Don't let Hallmark do your thinking for you. <laughs> yeah. uh, and write them out and hand them out on special occasions. I used to write our grandkids letters regularly. Yeah. And Tara said, Dad, that was so exciting. They, they were getting your letters, and I stopped doing it. You so know, maybe you know, right funny. now it's a reminder. Most of the cards you open, you don't even read the words in the card. You don't. That, 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 that the manufacturer you don't. You read the cards, the, the words that were written hand, by hand, you know? Yes. Uh, because that means a lot. I think we were all talking a while back on the things that our children did for us when they were young because they quit doing it. I was going through my my, my files the other day, and I have a file on, uh, for both girls that I had stuck everything that they had ever given me. Hmm. And they used to stick notes up. And I was sitting on the ground, Tiffany goes, I thought you were gonna you were doing this. And I go, I was until I ran across these. Hmm. And I was going through every one of them. You know, it was, it, it was a moment that, it, like you said, those are Sabbath moments. Go back and what what yep. did I say, Pastor? Retrospect, right? Yes. When yes. I was in Washington yes. for a month, I had a little bag, and it was stuff that my my five year old daughter at the time she she put all the stuff in it, and um and pictures and different things, and it was just it was the it was I, I still have that bag. I'm never gonna let go of that, you know. No, don't ever let go of stuff like it's, that. Um, it's, it's so important. It's it, huge. It, but but like we're saying, these are ideas that have impacted our lives. Yes. And it's things that other people can do, and you don't have to, like you said, Pastor, spend a great deal of money on well, it. Well, the Alaska, that Alaska f- last frontier, I forgot what it was called, but I know they had a Christmas thing on every year, and they back there they didn't have stores, Walmart, Target, whatever to go to for Christmas, and they all made each other Christmas mm-hmm. presents. They would spend a month or two out in the woods gathering stuff mm-hmm. and making things for someone. I'm sure it's just for the show. They, right after that, they probably went to Walmart or Target, yeah, whatever. But but it was a really cool idea anyway. So I don't know how long we want to go on this broadcast today. People uh, are traveling. I want to say one more thing about being thankful. A lot of people don't know what to be thankful for because they don't remember what they've prayed for. Mm. Mm. And um, I have uh, preached this, and I haven't practiced as well as I've preached it, but it's important to write down what you, oh. what you want to ask God. Mm. Because if you don't, you might forget. And if you forget, you're not going to know when he answers. What, I've, what have I teach, taught for years? Right. You guys know that. I have taught pray specifically. So when he answers the prayer, you'll know it was him. Yeah, exactly. And, 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 and pray fervently, which is yes. like, oh, you know, uh, believing um, yes. in your prayers. And so I just encourage you guys to, if you, you think, oh, I don't have anything to be thankful for. God never answers my prayers. Well, what was the last thing specifically that you prayed? Do you remember? I think and that so comes important. along with desires too, though, because like you could sometimes maybe people are writing down their prayers and like God's never answering this, but it's your desires might be wrong. You know, the thing that yeah. you're actually chasing could be wrong. I like what C.S. Lewis says. He says, if you find yourself, if, if, if you find something in this world or if you find something in this world that nothing can satisfy, you know, you were meant for another world. Hmm. And it's the idea that there's just really nothing in this world outside of God that's really right. going to bring you pleasure. Now, God gives you these gifts in the world to, to right. want and understand, but Really, those desires—if if it's not caught up in God, it's 
it's going to fall apart. It's, it's Matthew, right? It's, it's rust is going to destroy it. The moths are going to eat it. It's nothing that's, it's temporary. It's funny. The things that we talk about that's important to us that we're thankful for isn't more money. Isn't the, it's the it's, thing. It's, it's that time we're going to spend with it, our family and our friends and those notes and those cards. And when you do funerals, you realize what's important in life. Yeah. When the family comes up and speaks, yeah. I don't know how many funerals I have done lately that I leave going, man, I'm, I'm humbled out mm. and also inspired like never before to hear what some of these people are saying about right. their loved ones. So we can be thankful for God's word, yep. thankful for our friends, yep. thankful for our kids, thankful for our church. I'm also I hope very this thankful motivates. for uh, Costco pumpkin pie. Just throwing that out there, okay? <laughs> Pretty thankful for that. Do, do, you know what? We I bought it pumpkin pie and brought it home two days ago. Oh gosh, three. Your mother had not been feeling real well, and I. So it's not I, there I, anymore. I talked. It's my, not there anymore. No, no. I want to tell you what happened. <laughs> I felt bad for her because your mother, she like weighs ninety two pounds. She had been not feeling well, and I, I thought I'm going to sacrifice and get this pumpkin pie for her. Mm. She needs to get some calories in her, <laughs> and brought it home. Who do you think ate the first two pieces? Oh, I knew we were going. I there. did, <laughs> but I had the willpower to throw half of it away. No, yeah. because I said I cannot finish this. But what I do every Thanksgiving, I have a 24-hour period because I'm a health nut. I really watch my health. Mm -hmm. For 24 hours, I eat anything and everything I want. 24 hours, and I mean, I'm sitting there watching the clock. When that 24 hours starts, I go, praise God. <laughs> I will probably eat a pumpkin pie and a half just myself it's good. with whipped cream on it. But anyway, I hope we're motivating yeah. our audience, Josh, and maybe having some of them refocus going, hey, there's some pretty cool ideas here. I think I'll start a tradition. If you start a tradition because of this broadcast, please let us know. I would please. love to know. I think, yeah, if you, uh, ha if you can develop a more thankful mindset this holiday season, yes. you will have made many yes. wins. And, and a lot of those wins... Uh, will go on throughout your entire life, and it, it'll help you be actually physically healthier. I really believe this. Oh, um, definitely. And so just go out there, be healthy yes. in your mind, um, be thankful, you know? Thanksgiving. Let's put more of the emphasis on the thanks yep. than look, we do the giving. Look around at what or you have. Or let them go together. They're both important. Look around at what you have. Yeah. Right? Well, Thanksgiving, let me rephrase that. Put more uh, emphasis on the thanks more than receiving. Mm. Uh, giving, yes, they go together. Thanks and giving. But uh, we yeah. want to give, too. So, All right, guys. I uh, hope you guys have a good holiday, yeah. and we will see you next week. Love you, and drive safe. Bye.